I'm Brad Lamphere. I'm a postdoc from North Carolina State University on the Fiber Project. And we're out here tonight on the Kaiwal River, which is one of our focal streams, to catch Ribulus hard eye, which is the native fish that was already present in these streams before we ever set foot out here. And the reason we're out here is this fiber project has a lot of parts to it. And the big idea, though, is to see how guppies are affected by the environment, switching from high predation to low predation, uh, which is what this is, since there's no other fish here uh, except for Ribulus. And also to see how the environment uh, affects the guppies. I already said that. And how the guppies change the environment, and in turn, you get a feedback between the two. Well, one part of the environment um, that we're out here to get tonight is Ribulus hard eye. Um, well, the reason Ribulus are already out here when other fish can't make it is that they're unusually good at dispersing uh, across land, believe it or not. Um, it's, uh, Ribulus is a killer fish, and they're exceptionally tolerant to oxygen stress. And so they're willing to get out on the bank on wet nights. Uh, it was actually raining earlier today. I wish it uh, was still a little wetter. Uh, on, a cold, on a wet night like this, uh, you might see Ribulus just dancing around on the rocks, uh, looking for side pools, uh, looking to get around barriers, whatever. Um, so what you find in Trinidad is that Ribulus is pretty much a ubiquitous feature of headwaters. And they achieve these really high densities uh, dominated by uh, large, uh, slow-growing adults, um, uh, probably limited by uh, intraspecific competition. Now, the way we catch these fish uh, is using these handy-dandy dip nets. And I'm going to attempt to catch one in real time uh, wish me luck. Show you how we do it. Earn my salary here. Okay, <laughs> let's see. So here's a small rivulet uh, in the water. I've got it directly in my headlamp. And all we do is we try to coax them into our dip nets. Now, you might say that guppies have one move. Rivulets have about two moves. And so you have to think a little bit ahead of them. Am I going to get lucky this time? Yes, I did. All right, so there you go. Uh, that's the little Ribulus. Um, as I said, they're a killer fish. This one's a male, which we get from the tail, uh, which is black with uh, some yellow on it. And you might also be able to see an orange mark along its anal fin. Anyway, so what we do is, uh, Ribulus are a little hardier than guppies. We just take the fish, goes in a Ziploc, and that's part of the sample. We'll take that home and I'll go ahead and turn off my headlamp again. And we're going to uh, give it an individual tattoo the same way we do with the guppies. And then release it again after collecting, you know, length, weight, the usual stuff. And in that way, we'll be able to estimate population size, uh, size structure of the population, uh, individual growth and movement. Uh, all of which could be affected by uh, the intrusion, the invasion, the introduction of the guppies that we're going to do, that we have done downstream. Uh, we're up here in the control reach, which provides us uh, spatial control. Um, if uh, something happens that is in both the introduction and control, for example, if the population drops in both, that wouldn't be evidence of a guppy effect. That would just be something uh, related to climate, unless you want to say that guppies affect the climate, uh, but that's maybe a bridge too far. Uh, we also have a different kind of control, which is we were sampling in the introduction reach before the guppies were introduced, so we also have a before-after comparison for the introduction reach. Uh, altogether, it's called a backy design, before, after, control, impact. And the idea is, by doing having those two types of controls, both temporal and spatial, uh, and then replicated across four rivers, that we see a consistent pattern, or at least see the important patterns, anyway, of uh, the signature of the guppy introduction. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily get you to mechanism. Uh, that's more of a mesocosm thing um, that I believe David's talked about already. Uh, now, what kind of uh, effects could be happening? Well, uh, these rivulets, and I'll go ahead and... So this is a good example of a slightly overpacked bag. But uh, these guys are uh, generalist uh, predators. Uh, Gape limited is what we like to call them. Uh, they, uh, When they're young, like... Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can't... This one doesn't have a really young one. But young ones are more on aquatic prey, like uh, mayflies and... Uh, caddisflies and uh, coronamids, which gives them a big diet overlap with uh, guppies. And then the adults, as they get larger, uh, become more interested. In, they're able to uh, capture larger prey and also uh, tend to shift somewhat anyway toward terrestrial prey. 
like crickets or ants or wasps, that sort of thing that might fall into the river. Uh, so since there's a diet overlap and there's some habitat overlap, Rivulus and guppies both like these uh, pools like this. This pool, for example, probably has 60 Rivulus in it right now. Um, so there's a potential for big overlap, but given that they're active at different times of day, we're out here at night with the Rivulus when they're awake, and uh, the guppy folks obviously sample in the daytime when the guppies are awake, it's possible that they don't interact all that much, uh, it's much like uh, workers on different shifts in a factory. But that's not what we see in nature. Um, Trinidad has a number of barrier waterfalls, uh, actually like we have downstream here, that uh, don't allow guppies over, but rivulets are able to get over because of that dispersal ability I was talking about. And so if you sample the pools above and the pools below the waterfalls, you'll find that uh, the, the rivulets only area has a density of rivulets about three times greater than you have just below the waterfall, which has the guppies. Um, which is a pretty strong evidence, uh, at least it's a correlation, uh, that suggests that guppies have a pretty strong negative impact on rivulets. Now, whether that's a comp competitive effect or a predation effect of guppies on juvenile rivulets uh, is one of the things that we're trying to work out as part of this project. And that is about what I have to say, and I hope to talk to you all some more later. Bye.